Shalom friends and welcome to House of David. Well, this week we're talking about very important and powerful thing from the Bible. We're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit. We are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and I'll be talking to you about the gifts and, and the power of the Spirit and how important it is for us to gain it back in our churches. We need to seek God for His anointed. Without the anointing of God, there's nothing we can do. We can sing to God, we can praise God, we can teach His Word, we can pray for people, but we need the anointing to remove the yokes. We need the anointing to see the power of God moving. And this is what my heart is all about, to see the power of God moving. Every revival, you research, when revival starts, it is, it is always with the power of God moving. So we need to invite the Holy Spirit's power back into our midst to see the revival. I am excited already. Friends, after this message, I'll be back here to minister to you and believe God for your revival and for your miracle. So stay tuned, watch the message, and I'll be right back. Because the Bible says that men, the, the Spirit of God will manifest everything. The Spirit of God will activate your ministries that Jesus gave. The Spirit of God will maintain the administration that God releases and the Spirit of God will activate the gifts and manifest everything what God has said if you don't believe me if you look at me very um, you know with a lot of questions look at in, in into Genesis at the beginning God has created the heavens and the earth and the earth was without form and void. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. So God said, because He is the administrator, let there be light, and Jesus is the Word. And there was light. The Bible says and declares that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And nothing was made without Him. Nothing was made without Him. And in the book of Proverbs, it says, I was there at the creation. Of course, because Jesus is the Word of God. But all the activations and all the powerful things that God has created and done, it has been done by the Spirit of God. So when God said, let there be light, the, the Spirit of God turned the light. So this is how it works. But the manifestation, manifestation, and look at carefully, it says about this. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit. It doesn't say the manifestation of the gifts, of the fruit, the manifestation of everything. It's, it's, it specifically says, but the manifestation of the Spirit. It says, in generally speaking, God says there has to be the manifestation of the Spirit. But what is the manifestation of the Spirit? What the Spirit of God is going to do? Everything. Did you understand what I said? The administration of God, the, 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 the Word of God, who is Jesus, all the ministries that Jesus has given, the manifestation is of the Spirit. You cannot manifest the gift of the Spirit. You cannot even produce the fruit of the Spirit. Do you know why? Because it's not yours. It says the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit. Now listen to me. If you are not an apple, but if you are a pear, can you be belonging to an apple tree? Never. Because, because, because I'll tell you why. It's because apple tree will, create, will produce apples. You understand? So... If you're not spiritual, if you're not walking by the Spirit, you will never be able to produce spiritual gifts in your life and the fruit. You have to belong 
to the Spirit of God. Amen? You have to be spiritual. You have to be born again. You have to walk in the Spirit. This, uh, this is why a lot of people, a lot of people, they struggle with these things. Why people struggle today with the gifts of the Spirit is because it's, <laughs> it's simple and it's difficult. You know why? If you are not spiritual, if you're carnal, and you can be carnal, you know, carnality doesn't come only because uh, you are a backslider. You know, carnality comes into our life when we begin to reason and believe the Word of God with our mind, with our own understanding. That's where the carnality comes in. When we are not allowing the Spirit of God to open the Scriptures to us and to believe exactly what God said. Our carnal, carnality comes from the carnal mind, right? Because everything is really manifested or manifested in your life because it's connected with your mind. It's the way you think. It's the way you comprehend. It's the way you understand. So a lot of carnal believers can be everywhere because the way they believe. Is that clear? You can believe in Jesus till, the, till, till, till you die, but you can't be carnal. Because you can even believe in Jesus carnally. Have you, do you remember, did you watch last Tuesday night service? I was teaching about Peter. You remember? He confessed Jesus as Christ. And then the next moment he said, you cannot go to the cross. He was one minute in the spirit, another minute he was in the flesh. When the spirit of God has allowed him to understand that Jesus is Christ, he was confessing Jesus as Lord. He was in the spirit. But then all of a sudden, because of his good influence and good intentions, he says, no, 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 you cannot do that, Jesus. He moved into his carnality. All right? This is how we can be. One moment we praise in God, the next moment we question in God. Our faith can be spiritual. Our faith can be based on the spiritual facts. And our faith can be based on carnal facts. If our faith is based on carnal facts... In the word of God, if you debate it and say, no, God doesn't heal today. God doesn't speak in tongues anymore today. And God doesn't do this and God doesn't do that. You be, you, you're moving yourself into a carnal position. And when you're carnal, the spirit of God doesn't do anything. Nothing. We don't want that. The manifestation of the Spirit is so important in our life. And I'm not talking about the gifts right now. I'm just talking about the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Without whom we cannot do nothing and we cannot achieve anything at all. Your dependency on the Holy Spirit is essential. Your dependency on the Holy Spirit is essential. Amen. Because but the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is given. Listen to me. It's already been given to each one of you. The manifestation of the Spirit has been given to each one of you to profit each other. That's amazing. You see, when we are walking in the Spirit, this is why when, when the revival begins, I'll bring you an example. When revival begins, majority of people that are the core of that church where revival begins... They are spiritual. 
And usually revival begins through the core of people that are praying and believing for it. So are they getting ready? So that is spiritual. And when people are spiritual, they will do things in the spirit. They will prophesy in the spirit. They will use the gifts in the spirit. God will use them. And God will move through their life on other lives. And it will be done precisely. Done well. And we've seen that before in revivals. Until the carnality comes again and takes over. We've seen that too. That's how people kill revival. Okay? This is why we need to discern. And a lot of people are trying to use the gifts with their carnal mind. And God is not in it. A lot of people prophesy carnally. Did you know that? They fail to do it. They feel the push to do it, but they do it carnally. Why? Because they are not. You see, if you want to walk in the gifts and allow God to do it right, you have to move yourself from, the, from carnality. You have to make sure. If you don't want to make a mistake, you have to make sure that your life and you live in the life in the spirit, not in the flesh. How can you prophesy? How can you pray for people? How can you speak for things? How can, you, how can God use anybody in spiritual gifts if people are totally flesh? It's not possible. It's the price to pay. So this is where uh, in the church people are misunderstanding. Sometimes people think, I've been anointed. And God has given me the gifts, and I've been prophesied, or I've been praying for people. I've seen people getting healed. It means it's mine, so it doesn't matter what kind of life I live. The gifts are mine because they're irrevocable. That's right, they are. But they dry out. You have to stir up the gifts. Why? You have to, because you have to walk by the Spirit of God. If as soon as you're moving back into your flesh... The gifts are there, but they will be moved, manifested by you, not by, by the Spirit. Uh-huh. Did you get this? So there's a danger for people, and this is why a lot of people, they are afraid to move on the gifts, because they are not spiritual. I appreciate people who are cautious about this up to a certain point because they realize that they're carnal and they could make a mistake. But move from your carnality, begin to love the Spirit of God, begin to fellowship with God, begin to do something, begin to pay the price because to each one was given a gift. We all have received the manifestation of the Spirit. We all have access to it, but not all of us are walking by the Spirit. Many of us are carnal. So we, got, we cannot misunderstand this point and that Paul was speaking. Because you know what? In church of Corinth, there was a lot of gifts. The gift, gifts of the Spirit, they were already been introduced. But people were doing this out of order because they were not in the Spirit. They were carnal. You want me to prove that to you? 2 Corinthians chapter 3, he says, I couldn't talk to you as to spiritual people, Paul says. What? Seems like we're moving in the spirit and we have the gifts and everything else, but he says, I couldn't talk to you as to a spiritual because you have divisions among you. All kind of a nonsense. A spiritual person, a prophet, prophetess, or anybody else who is walking in the spirit, they are not going to be puffed up. Because in next chapter, Paul seals these things that everybody must walk in love. And love does not puff up. It does not pride itself. It does not salute itself. It does not pull itself for. See, it's all connected. Do you understand what I mean? Without this, the reality of what Paul says is not going to be happening. And here's what it is. We are on the right path because we already understand what the Spirit of God uh, can do and who He is and what He wants to do. But a lot of people, they don't even realize that. 
So they're behind in that subject, way behind. So we need to pick it up and begin to walk toward that. I've learned that from that man of God. God used him in my life to understand this very well. That's why I cannot teach. That's why I can't teach this day because I know what it is. I live that through. All right. I've seen God moving uncontrollably because I have allowed him to move this way. And I've seen God being decreased in my life because I became carnal. And it's so easy to do that. Carnality will kill everything. It's not because God becomes hopeless there. No, no, no. God's strength and power is always there and nobody can take that out over but one thing God disagrees he says with your flesh I will never share my glory with no man hey and that is he says I will never share my glory with any flesh And God knows when we are carnal, when, when we are not. And he says, as soon as you begin to move in the carnality, he says, I move out. I stay away. I don't, I, I don't bother. I'll let you have it. And that's where the problem becomes and begins. Because God says the spirit and the, and the flesh are enemy, enemies. The spirit and the flesh are enemies. So you think it's easy. You think, well, if somebody will teach us the gift of the Spirit, they're going to start activating. No way. It doesn't happen that way. The Spirit of God will begin to move only when you will understand that you are flesh and nothing else. You know our frame, and we know that we are dust. And submit yourself under the heavy hand of God. Pay the price. Begin to deal with your flesh. Say no to your carnality. Then the Spirit of God will start moving. This is why a lot of times the way people do things, and I always very careful, I'm very careful about when people, they, they are spiritual and they move in the gifts, I want to see their life. I want to see their personal life. Because if their personal life is a mess, the Spirit of God is not moving. It's the carnality, it's the flesh. The gifts are there, but they are not moved by the Spirit. Amen? So you think it's easy. It's not. You're going to have to start paying the price. So when the revival begins to move and the core of people, as I already said, they are anointed by God and they together in unity, they know the will of the Spirit and they do exactly what the Bible says, then God moves through them amongst many. This is why, and then the, the gifts of the Spirit begin to manifest equally and exactly. As God wants, because the spirit, people are in tune with the Spirit. And you can trust the team like that. You can trust people like that. And there, this is why the revival, in the revival, there's hardly any mistakes until people move themselves away again from the spiritual life. And they are taken over by their carnal mind. See, it's very important to understand that our carnal mind is an enemy. Our brains can be enemies to ourselves. This is why the Bible says in Romans 12, you need to renew your mind by the washing of the Word of God as soon as possible. Because your mind is the very block. It's the block number one, not your heart. Your mind is the block number one to anything that God wants to do. Amen? Because God has given us a free choice. And we can be agree with God, we can be disagree. And my God, how many times I hear preachers saying, 
well, the spiritual gifts are not for today, or the spiritual gifts, people don't understand what it is, and the speaking tongues, and they begin to just criticize things and close their mind to the work of the Spirit of God. And do you know what? In doing these things, they're not even realizing that they're not serving God any longer. They're serving themselves and the people. Likewise. And even they could build a big place and big church. Any error of the scriptures will stop the Spirit of God moving. Praise be to Jesus. Father, I just give you praise in the name of Yeshua, Jesus our Messiah. Lord God, it's time. It's time for us to see your power. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. I just pray for everyone who is watching us today in the name of Jesus. Let your spirit come. Let your spirit touch people's lives. Lord God, people are hungry and thirsty for you, Lord God. So I pray in Jesus' name, I pray that the shoulders will be healed right now in Jesus' name. As somebody is watching us with uh, teeth will be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will just move on their behalf and resurrect and touch and heal and bring revival back into our lives. Revival of the Spirit of God. Bring revival, my Lord God. I just pray in the name of Jesus. Lord God, remove every religious obstacle from our life. Remove everything that is hindering our, our, ourselves, Lord God. Remove everything that is not of you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that we will be on fire for you again. On fire. Revive this country. Revive us again, Lord God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let the fire come upon us. Let the fire of revival come upon us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I just give you praise. I just feel like speaking tongues right now. And if you want to do that at home, please do that. Just worship Him and praise Him. Hallelujah. Just praise God right now. Touch us, Lord God. Resurrect us again. Oh, bless us, Lord. I praise you. Let the healing power touch our lives. And Lord, I thank you for touching these precious people right now and healing them. So every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of sickness, Every religious spirit in the name of Jesus, I rebuke and I command it to let the people of God go right now in Jesus' name. Let the people of God go in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, touch people's lives. Lord, help to see in every church the power of God moving and the excitement of the Holy Spirit and revival coming our way. In Yeshua's name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. Somebody's left shoulder just being healed in Jesus' name. There's a lot of healings right now that are happening and I want to thank God for it. Thank God. We're coming to the end of this program and I want you to be excited about what God is doing. Friends, next week watch our program or call us and find out where we are going to be with our miracle meetings in September. I know the day, I know the cities and the dates are still working. We're still working on it's uh, September. We're going to be in Winnipeg. Then we're going to be in Regina, we're going to be in Saskatoon, we're going to be possibly in Edmonton, and for sure in Lethbridge. So for the dates and the time, watch us next week or call us at 1-877-279-4744. For more information or for prayer, call us as well. We will answer you and we'll pray with you. And my friends, we're coming to the end of course, but can I encourage you? God is moving by His Spirit. We want to see revival in this country. We want to see the power of God moving. And we need to stay on the air. I'd like to change the time on Vision TV. But we can't afford right now. It's, it's expensive. So I'd like to move us up from 7.30 in the morning and for 5.30 in the morning somewhere else to better time. But we need help. We need more partners. We need more support. Could you please be a partner with us? Could you please send your best gift today so that we may continue to do the will of God and do even greater and better? So give us a call. If you have a testimony, please share that with us. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you and He loves you and we love you too. Till tomorrow, we'll see you again. Bye-bye. You know, when the Lord knew He was going to the cross, this was His prayer, that we would all be one.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have made a way for us to come. House of David, Jewish Messianic Ministry, is produced and sponsored by viewers like you. We appreciate your support, which is allowing us to continue to broadcast our programming. Thank you, and God bless you. Shalom.